Hi everyone, I'm Alina. I'm Liz. And I'm Chris. And the three of us work at St. John's University Writing Center as graduate assistants. So we are invested in the day-to-day -day operations of our writing center as leaders. We toggle between our identities as administrators, mentors, and students, together giving us a complex perspective on how to conduct student leadership from a higher level. We see what's going on, what needs to be done from an administrative point of view, what kind of training needs to happen, and how to keep our writing center running smoothly. But we also see how the job affects us on, and our undergraduate staff in a very real way. Today, we're going to start off by speaking about some of the issues we saw last semester, how we implemented our theoretical framework, We'll talk about our responses on in creating a community contract and how we plan to take this research forward. So we started to notice that some issues were occurring in the writing center space for both um, consultants and our clients. We responded as peers and le leaders across these semesters. Um, there were a number of incidents in our client report forms that, that had a creep in a comfortable gestures and title requests to our female staff, um, sexualized and racialized comments, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and how we move forward with, with this issue is that we um, we created a, a solution for each of these problems um, in a variety of different ways. Um, what we did to address it was we looked at other writing centers to, to look to see if they had any kind of issues with student misconduct. And while we were still trying to make our space a comfortable for everybody, we started to see that there was a gap in between the student misconduct research. Actually, there were only two articles on writing center misconduct. Um, and this is what we did to solve it. Let's yeah, so so the first article that we reference is Robbie Nadler's Sexual Harassment, Dirty Underwear, and Coffee Bar Hipsters. And it affirmed our findings that not much exists in the realm of student misconduct research. He wrote that fewer than a dozen hits will appear in a database library research, um, especially on sexual harassment. While his work primarily focused on the pandemic lockdown virtual spaces that writing centers inhabited, it still did inform us on how to move forward. Nadler writes about tutor and student consent. What do we consent and what we do not consent to, how this is communicated and how this changes depending on the space that we find ourselves in. He asks, when consultants lose agency because of undesirable circumstances that they have no choice in entering, how is that not the ultimate form of harassment? We ask the same question and wonder how the questions that Nadler raises about online spaces can translate into the physical spaces we inhabit. With his research in mind, we adopted the concept of a community contract from Kovalik, Haley, and Du Bois article confronting student misconduct in the writing center. They adopted a student-facing policy to enforce the acknowledgement of student and tutor rights before being able to schedule appointments, virtual or in person. According to Kovalik, this would serve as a reminder to students that even if they are logging onto sessions outside of the writing center, they are still expected to adhere to the code of conduct as if they were on campus. Our desire with our contract is twofold, creating a culture of accountability for clients and consultants, as well as expanding the autonomy of consultants over their own time. As we previously reflected on, many of the student misconduct issues occurred because clients came in feeling that in exchange for their tuition money, they were guaranteed an entitlement to a consultant's time and intellectual resources without consideration for any kind of code of conduct. This contract seeks to work in addition to the university's code of conduct, serving to draw attention to the consultant's right to collaborate with the clients at their will and at their own choice. Okay, so the first step of creating this document was considering how we would incorporate our staff and their voices into it. With the spirit of collaboration, our methodology for designing a contract included an all staff meeting as well as an accessible brain dump document where all consultants could anonymously pose suggestions for what boundaries would allow them to ensure safety and control in a session. So, as we can see here, many of our consultants pose their concerns side by side in what textually feels like solidarity to protect each other and themselves. The root of many of these issues rested in the harmful logic that a consultant could be taken advantage of. For example, students often use their phone or other devices rather than actively collaborating during a session. Students expect writing to be done for them. Sometimes students are often asked content-based questions rather than writing-related questions. Another way we attempted to organize this is thinking about non-negotiables and negotiables. For example, some consultants wanted to take on the more emotional side of writing consultancy and assist student clients in finding resources that they needed. Other consultants felt that they did not necessarily have the energy or desire to take on that emotional labor and thought it more healthy for both consultant and client to focus more so on the, on the ways of accessing the service they needed rather than providing them. This was negotiable since it was different for each consultant's preference. 
non-negotiables, including maintaining respect and dignity in how you treat the consultant, how you show up to a session, and how you consider the relationship. When drafting the contract, there was some thought about what this contract poses theoretically for power dynamics within writing center culture. Contracts on their own are prescriptive agreements between two parties, a set of rules and regulations to abide by that are designed to protect individuals by limiting interpretation and scope. While these types of contracts can sometimes be seen as too authoritarian and student-centered spaces, we ultimately chose language which would balance a collaborative, welcoming tone while still grounding consultant autonomy in a session. At its end result, this contract would show how collaboration works best when boundaries are clearly drawn rather than ambiguously assumed. This becomes increasingly important as writing center St. John's is a majority space where consultants' presence is publicly available via our scheduling platform. With high rates of sexual harassment on campuses, such a space requires distinct protections necessary for collaboration to flourish. While there is concern that boundary setting causes students to feel formal, it is important to note that these boundaries enhance the com com comfortability of both client and consultant to work without fear. So, examining the language here, such as posing every statement with I agree and requiring initials, one can read the lack of control we may have felt as administrators, and maybe even how that feeling of losing safety of the writing center space alerted us to a need to be more strict with policy writing and interpretation. While drafting this contract, there was much concern about how certain terms would be interpreted and how we could best enforce a culture of accountability. These statements relate to our mission, to the expectations of a client so that a consultation can be collaborative and non-negotiable behavior in a workplace. So in the edited draft of the contract, several changes were created. This version of the contract was made after winter break when we had somewhat cooled down from last semester. We came back to the contract with our mission to practice care, collaboration, and non-hierarchical praxis in mind. We removed the initials and replaced I agree statements with language that indicated what the student will do or is expected to act. Rather than I agree, it is I will. We hope that this change of tone would maintain the welcoming energy of the space while still grounding the agency and authority of the consultants. This is the final copy of our contract. Um, we kept all of our changes except for one significant difference, the last statement. We changed this last statement to overtly make clear that consultations are spaces with boundaries that are not to be crossed. We wanted to clarify that the authority of the consultants to set boundaries was clearly protected to both clients and consultants. So looking forward, our research is indeterminate at the moment on account of it being so recent. We are closely monitoring the success of our contract in a few different ways, and we shall continue to do so throughout the semester and throughout the next couple of months. We, like Kovalik, Haley, and Du Bois, will have a behavior log in our scheduling platform, WC Online. We're able to make client report forms. Typically, these forms are sent to the client as a recap of the session, but they can also be internal reports for the center itself. If there's any problem, uncomfort, or misconduct in a session, we, we can make a report that stays in our system. This will be useful for any future research that will be done in the space and will be helpful as we monitor the appropriateness of sessions. Additionally, next semester, we plan on interviewing consultants to determine how effective this behavior, the contract is. From, the, from their viewpoint. These are a few ways that we'll be monitoring the contract or the success over the next couple of months. We're incredibly grateful to have been able to work with each other and with the undergraduate staff at our writing center to develop this community contract. And we hope that we get to see tangible change in result. After seeing the toll that these numerous accounts of student misconduct had on our undergraduate consultants, it feels good to know that we have something in place that will hopefully be able to help. That being said, we don't think the work is over. There's still much to do in the realm of sexual harassment and student misconduct in both the Writing Center and at the university at large. What you've heard today isn't the full extent of our research and our, of our project. Rather, it's just a snapshot. We're actually working towards publication. So if you're interested in our subject, please look for a full article. We're eager to hear your thoughts about our subject as well as your thoughts on the work that we're doing here. Thank you.